Okay, chat. Now, hey, look, we here, we here. YouTube, say hi to Twitch. Twitch, say hi to YouTube. Oh, I'm saying we live. We live. We're recording right now. This is one on YouTube. You can see your future self on the tube. You can also subscribe to to the YouTube as well as uh, we're growing. So shout out to you. So this is from the Maya Chess Open. I was just in Portugal playing in a nine round tournament. It was fire. It was amazing. And I did gain some points overall in this tournament. So this is the first round. I played uh, 1800 here named Bruno. This one's called the French Toast. Bruh. French Toast. Oh, we. All right, here we go. So I go E4. Right? E4. He goes E6. D4 and D5. Now, of course, you know, French, we always buy like, bro, the French is garbage. Garbage. But I also have some wins OTB with it and all this other stuff. Like, you know, I've also lost to the French before. So, of course, it's a solid opening. You just need to know what you're doing because the bishop on C8 is pretty gross. Like, that's the problem. But I'm an aggressive player. We know that. What's up, Mr. Rio? What up? And Nathan. Hello, guys. Who's a cup? This is high future me. Okay, so D5, E5, right? C5 and C3. He goes Bishop D7. After Bishop D7, Knight F3, right? Knight C6. And now, being very aggressive, chat, what do you play in this position? So this is up to you, obviously. You know, we're going to keep the video like 15, 20 minutes. Like, not too long. Not too short here. But, of course... We want to learn some things. We want to analyze. We want to see the game. So what do you play? In an aggressive manner, the most aggressive way to play this variation would be what, chat? What do you think? What do you think? Mind you, he played this in a, just a minute. Yeah, I was playing very quickly in a lot of games. G4, Queen B3. Okay, so let's look at this. Queen B3. Never seen this one. G4. Okay, G4. Bishop B5. Bishop G5. Okay. It's G5. Sorry, that's a wrong arrow c4 pawn c4 queen c8 mate okay yeah yes yeah, that's, that's uh, one time for you Bruh. okay all right cool 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 busy g5 i know zero french theory okay all right and and okay so the most aggressive way in a way is really bishop d3 going into what they call the what who knows what this is right who knows what this variation is called let's put this up there for you guys so you can do your own research at home I think I have a few videos here on YouTube about it, but what is this variation called? Does anyone know the name of this variation? Find a nice his K5G. Wow. That's okay. One day at a time. One move at a time. So Bishop D3 happens. <laughs> man. Wow. It's over nine wow. That man power level was nice. He like, yeah, the Bishop D3 variation. Wow, that was fired. <laughs> The bishop d3 variation from souls, correct. How is it aggressive? They can push this pawn to c4. That's actually a great observation, Rosie Poo. The c4 is a critical mistake. The problem is this this can be broken up very easily. I would love to go bishop c2, b3, right? And of course, you have b5. So, of course, if you go b5 now, I can go a4, but I'm going to go b3. If you go a6, eventually I'm going to play a4, but I get to keep the bishop on this long diagonal. This is really bad for black. In fact, this is usually never, ever a move, ever. Don't ever play c4 in this position. If the pawn is on like a3 or a4, c4 is a possibility because now there's a weakness. Let me put, make an example here. So like rook c8 and then a4. So the problem here is now, you know, I can go c4 in many cases, and then I can also lock it down sometimes, right? So you have to be careful. You have to be careful with that. c4 is not a move you want to be playing unless the a pawn is usually pushed in, the, in this variation, obviously. This is actually, in a way, the Milner Berry Gambit. It's what they call this. So after queen b6, I go castles and I say, take the pawn, bro. I don't care about nothing. I don't care about anything. So this is the Milner Berry Gamut. I actually already have one over the board with this opening. Wow, dang, 3 and 0. I'm not even going to lie, chat. That's just, wow. I mean, wow, I am actually 3 and 0. I beat a strong FM, beat a 2K, and then this guy, 1859. But. I'm 3 0 with this, but this is a very strong gambit, and you need to know what you're doing from the white side. Bye bye, pawn. Yeah, it's a gambit. It's a gambit. Because usually, if the bishop is on c8, there's this tactic of like, let me just make a random move. So, for the beginners in the chat here, knight takes, queen takes, white's a move. How does white win material here? What is the most accurate? Not, not just the one move, because you can find that one, but what is after the one move? What's the most accurate, chat? Easy. Very easy. Very easy move. Okay, bishop b5 check and then bishop d7. Let's do this in our head. Some little COE. A little calculation. 
COE, shopcantymerch.com. Yep, yeah, yeah, you already know we always got the drip everywhere. Bishop b5 check, and then what? Bishop d7, and then we grab the queen. That is, oh, that's right, dirty man. That's right, 100%. Garbage, that is because after bishop b5 check bishop d7 now of course if you take the queen it's fine you're winning you're winning but i said the most accurate journeyman which is bishop takes and then takes on d4 when you find a good move look for a better one so that's okay we go back this is why bishop d7 in fact in this position bishop d7 now he can take the pawn which he does in the game this is game by the way Knight takes d4. I go knight b to d2. So usually, and I'll, I'll have, I even have my own like files on this opening. And I'm just, you know, draw some arrows here. Hikaru like, shout out to my, my big dog. Hikaru, after knight c6, there's knight b3. Followed by that is bishop e3. Sorry, with the idea of rook to c1, knight to c5, b4, and a4. Uh, the reason why this is good is because I just have a very, I have a lead in development. I can be very quick, very fast. A pawn on e5, you don't even feel like you're down a pawn. A lot of times in these variations of uh, the Milneberry Gambit. But you need to know what you're doing because it is sharp. It's very sharp, right? Very sharp stuff. If bishop to c5, I like to play b4 immediately. After knight takes f3, queen f3, bishop d4, queen g3. Like a brilliant move. Sacking the rook because queen takes g7. Bishop takes e5, queen takes e5, f6, queen h5 check. And there's some very long, deep lines <laughs> that I have actually spent a lot of time with. But, of course, um, I have a very nice record with this opening. So, with that being said, knight b to d2. Cool. I'm, I'm, I'm sure he doesn't know all of this. He goes bishop b5, which is something I've never seen, in fact. I was like, well, I've seen it once in the old book I have, but in the old files. Also, yeah. yeah, yeah, this is this is nice. This is fun, but this is called French toast. I'm going to show you what happened. So, I take on b5, and this idea here with an early bishop d7, I actually like to play this sometimes, too, as well. I'm not going to lie. From the black side here, like the French that I was playing, if they go advanced, I have one loss OTB with this was a GM. Like you can play anything loose to a GM, right? But Queen B6, and he went knight oh, he went knight f3, and then bishop d7. This is the line I like to play. You even see me play this sometimes in bullet in the tournaments. But the idea here is to get rid of the light square bishop very fast. A lot of strong players play this. I think Linderman, uh, Alexander Linderman, Grandmaster, um, Marusovic, some other ones that would like to play this. Variation? It's it's a variation. It's very nice. It's very playable uh, as well. But in this sense, he's trying to play kind of like that. But the idea here is I already have an open position and I'm castled and etc. Right. So after bishop takes, taking with the queen, obviously lose the knight. So he has to take back with the knight, right? Knight takes, knight b3, because this is the most logical move for the knight. The knight looks terrible right now. I have no good squares. It's blocking the bishop in, knight to b3. Ideas are bishop e3, knight c5, sometimes a4, rook to c1 in some type of move order. So he goes knight e7. I go bishop e3, right? And I was thinking he was just going to move the queen back and allow knight c5, but, like, there's a lot of stuff here. And I'm actually curious because I never looked at it with the engine here after, until now. Queen d8. So I looked at a4 or knight c5. Knight c5, I looked at what if he goes b6. Um, and then I thought I was going to go knight a6 with the idea of queen a4 if knight c7. There's, like, a lot of stuff here. Um, yeah, rook c8 maybe a move. Queen a4, rook c1, like... I mean, it's still very playable, and white is actually plus one, according, according to the engine there. But he went with a move that I didn't expect at all. He went d4. It's actually number two on the engine. Just give the pawn back, bro. He like, yo, hey, bro, relax. I know you're aggressive and all, can't he? I'm going to just give it back to you. And I thought this was a very actually good move because the knight can go to d5 in some cases. So I need to act fast. When you use a gambit, chat. Or YouTube. When you're when you when you do a gambit, when you gambit anything, it's about rapid development. So you need to move very quickly, and everything you do it needs to be fast. But he gave he gave it back, obviously. So he gave it back, but I still need to be quick, or else he castles. Imagine a, a case where like he castles and the knight gets to d5, and there's like no, there's nothing. It's a very boring position, and I might even be worse. I mean, you know, kind of a weak pawn here. Even on this side, I'm not trying to like have an equal, super equal game. I want some imbalances. But I do take on d4. I take my pawn back. He takes, takes. And the problem with knight d5 is what, chat? What is the problem with knight d5 right now? So if he goes knight d5 in this position, which looks very logical and very good, it, it, it loses. 
immediately. To what? To what? To follow Talus Angel. Awesome Angel. It's an outpost. Yeah, it's a very nice outpost. Knight d5 is a great looking move. But unfortunately, there's a problem to it. What is that problem, chat? Knight takes e6. Well, that's what he wants you to do. After knight takes e6, he hit him and then he split him. He needs some milk. Oh, that's gonna hurt. He's just gonna hit him there, or I could just take on e6 with the queen. Oh my goodness. What did you just do? What did you just do? Bruh. What did you do, right? So you have to go queen a4, like Mike in the chat says, which is 100% correct. Queen a4 check. Very strong. So now the king can't castle, like some crazy stuff going on. And if king e7, knight f5, and you can't block with anything. So you have to move the king. So you're already in trouble. Cool. So knight d5 doesn't work, which is why I take with the knight. Also threatening stuff like knight f5. Just like a random move, something stupid. g6. I can go queen a4 check. And I can also go knight f5 with the idea of knight d6. Very strong. Very strong. So, again, knowing that I'm, you know, well, I, I didn't gambit now. I did in the beginning, but now I'm, I'm even. And I have an initiative or time, that is. I have some time. And initiative equals time and activity. Where did I get that from? Papa Blanca in um, Chess Fundamentals. I think he says that there, but very nice. Why not take the bishop too? Um, don't see that. Where, where are we taking this bishop at? Taking with the bishop. Oh, you mean taking with the bishop? Taking with the bishop is uh, it's it's a move. It's a move. The problem is like he can just kind of move somewhere like here, and I don't have any really good tempi. Queen check. Okay, I block with the knight. I'm saying. Then he like, what do you do next? Rook here. I might even be able to play bishop e7. Believe it or not. Believe it or not. Bishop takes is going to run into this gross pin. Right, and I can move the queen and castle, and this is what you don't want. You don't want. You know what I mean? I told you that quote about an initiative. Give me some credit. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Uh, yeah, 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 bro. Yeah, 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 exactly. Exactly. Okay, knight takes, knight takes. Queen a6. He went with queen a6. I thought this was a very, very good move. And now remember, we have to do this with time, chat. We have to do this with time. Right? Think about this. If he goes knight d5 and bishop e7, he's going to castle very quickly, and you are not getting any type of real advantage. So if you're white to play and move, think about these next two moves. How do we stop this? Can we stop this, chat? Can we stop it? What do you do? White to move. White to move, what do you do? He's <laughs> like, yo, it all makes sense right now. Paul, you, Eric, there you go. He's going to play knight d5 and bishop e7. What can we do about this? Queen g4 says so. Let's play super aggressive. There you go. Right mindset. Now, what's the move, Mike? Mike. What's... Great job. Play aggressive. What's the move? F4, F5. Okay. Okay. The next two moves, almost no matter what. Okay, well, maybe not. Queen g4, right, right. It's just back band F4, F5. Maybe bishop g5. Mike said, made him, bro. Bro, made him. Bro, made him. All right, all right, all right, all right. For sure, for sure. Yeah. I'm going to do that. Okay? So look. Knight d5 and bishop e7 are quite annoying. I really just couldn't get queen g4 to work all the way. reason why I say this is because, like, yes, I'm stopping him from moving the bishop. That's really temporary. What if he goes g6? For instance, knight d5. Sorry, let's go like... Okay, queen g4, knight d5 anyway. All right, knight d5 anyway. There is a g6 coming. And then bishop g7, and I cast, and he castles. There, it's going to be very hard to stop him from castling. So, I actually thought about this move here, which is move number three on the engine, believe it or not. They wanted rook to c1 or queen b3, which still I wasn't convinced all the way. I wasn't convinced. Queen b3, I didn't like knight d5. And then knight b5, I can't even go there yet. Like I saw queen b3. This is what I saw. Queen b3. Knight d5. The engine says rook a c1. And then knight b5. And you let him castle. Like, bro, this is what the... They say this is the best. Yeah, let him do this, bro. Bruh. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Garbage. Yeah, let him do this, bro. Let him castle. Like, this is, is not... This is what I wanted. So, I played... In fact. A4. 
A4. What is that, right? What if he goes knight d5? He does. What is my idea, chat? I went a4. He went knight d5. What is my idea? Right, exactly, chat. Like, the engine's stupid, bro. What is my idea? Knight b5, then rook c1. Okay. So you telling me, so you, you agree with the engine. Just knight b5, bishop e7. And then you rook c1 and you let him get out the way. Have a nice day. Okay. All right, get it. I get it. Hey, you know what I mean? I get it. I get it. Knight b5, knight. Okay, because he's he's going to play this no matter what. Bishop e7, castle. My man says out of there. Where do you go? Where do you go, chat? Where do you go? I was thinking very practically here. Sack the queen, then fork the knight on c7. Yeah, that's actually something too. Look at that. Knight b5, bishop b7. You like, huh? Huh. But here's one thing about the French. Always remember this. I'm giving y'all some Jedi tips right now. In the French defense, queen trades favor black. I'm already in the end game. I'm good. I know this, like from because I played different a lot from the black side. So a lot of times it favors black. So I'm like, oh no, oh no, I'm not going this route. Why would I give him this? So what I do is, in fact, so said it was a five, queen a four. So if you go bishop e7, if you go bishop e7, what happens? What happens if he goes bishop e7? What happens if he goes bishop e7? Queen a4, correct. So now he can't castle. The whole thing was to keep the king from castling. Practical. So now your, your rooks are disconnected, meaning you're behind on development, meaning as a human, it's going to be harder for you to find the correct moves that the engine would find because you're down in development and I'm up in development. I'm up faster. I also didn't have to sack a pawn anymore like I did in the beginning, right? So this is just winning, practically. Engine says everything equal, but like, practically speaking, I'm good. You know what I mean? Yeah, this was fascinating. I was really hyped about this. So, right, A5, he goes Bishop C5, and immediately I knew it was over for you, man. It was a wrap. He needs some milk. This is French toast. 100%. White to move? Give me the sequence. Not the move. I want the sequence. I want the sequence, guys. Give me the move. I want the, I want the sequence here. Not the move. What are the next two moves for white? What are the next two moves? White. Queen a4, 96, bishop c5 for Mike. 96, bishop takes e3. Okay, knight c7. Okay, queen a4, knight c6. Or knight slash knight takes e6. It's trendy blitz. All right. So, as I do want to point this out to you, I mean, after a knight takes e6, bishop takes e3. Knight takes c7 is going to be, oh my goodness. Bruh. You know, this is a family channel, right? We're going to just get this off the screen real quick before, you know what I'm saying? We TOS or something. Something crazy. So that don't work, but um, you, it's very close. Very close. In fact, I mean, a four check is, is the move first. This the move first. Then after queen a four check, king at fates, and now knight takes c6. <laughs> Correct. And bishop takes c5 and we live. And that's it. And the rest is history here. Bishop takes c5, king g8, and we're just going to blow through the rest of the game because I'm already up a pawn. The rest is kind of just a matter of a, of a technique and like, you know, just uh, preference as well. So I developed, you know, work to the file. Very nice. I play queen e4. Sorry. I hit the knight there. The knight goes back to c7. Queen takes b7. I'm hitting the knight. You can't move it. Obviously, rook in the corner is hanging. Rook c8. I go rook d6, all accurate, hitting the queen. Forcing the queen to either g4 or, you know, queen e8 or something. He goes queen e8, I go rook c6, and he resigns right here. That's a wrap. First house. First round up. First round up, so you feel good. Underrated player, obviously. But um, definitely a very nice game, I think. Why not knight takes e3 instead of queen takes e6? Um, it takes... Wait, oh. oh, no, it's check. It's check, bro. 
Let's check. I was like, what? Not. Let's check. You have to respond to the check. You have to respond to the check. Calculation over everything for the win. Exactly. Yeah. Correct. Nice little Frenchie. So, yeah, it's a, it was a check. That's why you have to take. This was called French toast, though. Again, from the beginning. We're going to end the video here. We're right at 20 minutes. A little bit over. We don't want to keep it too long. Milnerberry Gambit is what this is called. I am, I feel like an or expert. Oh, no, you know what? I've lost one game ever, OTB. But I played way too aggressive that game. I guess it's I am. I had some chances I was winning, but yeah, I lost that game. Only game I've ever lost, but I played it four times, OTB, that I can remember. Lots of games online. One game. So, pretty fire. So, this was, this is called French Toast here, chat. So, make sure you guys subscribe to the YouTube. Guys, we'll see you on the next video.